Hello viewers, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series on different kinds of voltagrams and their respective applications. We already discussed about cyclic voltammetry, linear sweep voltammetry and we also had a discussion on different applications and advantages, disadvantages of different voltagrams. In this video, we are going to specifically talk about differential pulse voltammetry or DPV. DPV is an important characterization tool in electrochemistry and it is used by different sections of researchers. In this video, we are going to learn about fundamentals of DPV. What are the specific information that can be obtained by doing DPV? So before we start the actual discussion on DPV, we should have some background information. So in any kind of voltammetry, we basically measure current against certain voltage application. And the current is contributed by two different types and those two types are Faradic component of current and non-Faradic component. So what is Faradic component? Faradic component means a reaction is happening on the electrode surface and it actually changes number of electrons in a short time span and that's, that's why the current ramps up or it suddenly ramps down based on the direction of the ele electron flow. And along with this Faradic component, there could be some non-Faradic component and one of the non-Faradic components is charging current. So what is charging basically? So the electrodes which we use in any electrochemical operation, they are basically charged electrode. That means that has a surface charge. For example, here we have shown this electrode has a positive charge. So what it does, it actually attracts the oppositely charged ions towards this interface. And here you can see negatively charged ions, that is anions are coming towards this electrode and forming a preferential layer onto the electrode surface. And this is the process of charging is, and during this charging, a current alteration happens and that current is called the charging current. So when we do say, cyclic voltammetry, the current which we are getting, that is basically combination of Faradic and non-Faradic. In general, Faradic component intensity is way higher than the non-Faradic component. If this is the case, then it interferes very negligibly, but sometimes what happens, this charging current also contributes significantly or the Faradic component of current is not that much high in of high intensity. In those cases, we may actually be confused whether the current is coming due to the Faradic part or the non-Faradic part or due to the charging current. And that is why we should have some procedure by which we can actually segregate these two components of the current or we can actually remove the non-Faradic component of the current and we get information about the Faradic component of the current. And DPV is a procedure by which we can actually negate this non-faradic component of current and we can actually have information related to faradic component. Again, we are saying it's not like we can totally neglect this non-faradic, but in DPV, we try to remove this background current, charging current as much as possible. So this is the basis. So here we have given one example, say this particular curve, there are two curves. It looks like a faradic component, but actually these curves are combination of faradic and non-faradic. And by looking at this curve qualitatively, you will not be able to say how much current is being contributed by the faradic part. And that is why some procedure should be there, which can actually segregate this faradic and non-faradic current. Now, how exactly we can do this segregation or we can subtract the charging current. So the simple idea is the true Faradic response. So here we have written this formula, true Faradic response is the current response which is obtained by the experiment because this guy is having both the Faradic and non-Faradic component and we are negating the background charging current. So if we do this, we can get current due to the Faradic response mostly. And how exactly this is done? This is done by making some delay in measuring the current by putting this kind of pulses. So you all know what is a pulse function. Suddenly a certain value of uh, say um, voltage is applied and we are actually allowing some time for holding that particular voltage. Again, in a layman language, say 
the voltage was minimum here we apply the pulse and say from this time step this particular voltage is applied and we hold this voltage for some time and then again we drop it so this is what the pulse is and we measure the current little bit delayed that means somewhere here if this is the time axis somewhere here we measure the current that is called delay in measuring the current and we are saying if we make a delay then we can actually negate the charging current why is it so why making the delay can negate the charging current we will come to this point in the upcoming slides but the idea is by applying this pulse function and making some delay in current measurement we can be able to negate this background charging current so in order to understand why we need to negate the background charging current and why we need to put a pulse and make a delay in measuring the current so we have given two equations the first equation shows the decay of the current or the charging current so ic represents the charging current and this is the formula for the decay of the charging current so all of you might have seen this particular formula this is nothing but the rc circuit charging response current so you might have read it uh, in your school level or early college days so you can just go back to rc charging circuit and you can have the derivation of this particular formula but for the time being we realize that this is the formula by which charging current depends so this is the time dependence charging current so here you can see with respect to time the current actually decays exponentially so here this red line shows exponential decay of the current but in case of faradic current uh, this particular if represents faradic current and with respect to time it follows this particular formula where you can see the current is actually inversely proportional to the square root of time so if we assume all other parameters can be kept as constant then if varies with t to the power of minus half and this is how the profile looks like if we plot this particular function it will look like this blue color curve so here one thing can be noticed so i have taken two vertical lines so here you can see after certain time step the capacitive component of current has been reduced significantly whereas the faradic component of current has not been reduced significantly because they are decreasing following to different nature to different mathematical expression and here is the logic by which we can actually neglect the non faradic component of the current while calculating the faradic component suppose you are taking a time step somewhere here so you have enough faradic component of the current but this non faradic component or the charging component has been reduced significantly and we can actually tell that we have actually negated this non faradic or charging current so i hope this particular formula distribution of the charging current and faradic current and their respective nature talks about the delay why we should make a delay so this is the delay say if this is t0 we have to make a delay up to this and that should be termed as the delta t we have taken a specific example this is called differential pulse voltmetry wherein the function looks like this so this is the black curve shows tear case increment of potential so when we linearly increase any potential basically it happens in a discrete manner so whatever whatever instrument you use to generate the function it basically generate discrete change so with respect to some time suppose now it is 0.2 voltage after some time it will be 0.21 then 0.22 0.23 this way it will keep on going so it is not continuous it is taking discrete point so the discrete point increment can be termed as a staircase function so this is the linear change of the potential alongside this we apply an additional pulse so again i'm telling the idea is we are putting a discrete staircase function and this staircase function is always added 
when we do say cyclic voltammetry or linear sweep voltammetry so the black curve is already there in most of the cases but the red one is not there here we are additionally imposing this pulse function along with the staircase function and we are deciding a pulse width so this particular distance is called t pulse or pulse width so what is happening actually we are having a staircase function suddenly we are putting a pulse and we are holding the pulse function for certain time say t equal to t pulse and what is happening on the electrode during that time that is being measured and this pulses can come in different cycles so this is first pulse second pulse third pulse so we have a staircase function and uh, on top of the staircase we are putting pulses pulse one pulse two and this way it will be going so this is the resultant one so ultimate potential looks like this so where exactly we are applying this potential we are applying this potential on the electrode surface and in the counter electrode we are measuring the current and the current response talks about the dpv so here we have shown this dk component again so this is the ic charging dk which decays very fast so we should take a time step so the concept is how much t pulse you should be providing that depends on the decay curve of the charging current so here you can see we have given a schematic where we are showing at this point the charging current has decayed significantly and the faradic component has certain value so we should allow this much of pulse so that the charging component of current decreases significantly and we will be able to measure the faradic component of the current so the delta t1 so where exactly we are measuring the current so that you have to understand so this is the delta t1 and that is the delta t2 so initially we are measuring a current at this point then allowing the pulse and after that we are measuring the current again so when we are measuring at t equal to say at this particular point delta t1 then we have both faradic and non faradic component of current why because it is before the beginning of the pulse so the first current which we are measuring that is just before the beginning of the pulse function and when the pulse function has not begun there we have both faradic and non faradic component of the current now what happened we have imposed the pulse the charging non charge uh, charging current uh, started diminishing and we are again measuring the current at this particular point and that is delta t2 and then we are subtracting the first measurement from the second measurement so the i is equal to i delta t2 minus i delta t1 so current measured at this particular point and at this particular point so by doing this we can actually negate the charging component of the current here also schematically it is shown that this charging current has diminished significantly but we have this faradic component of the current so when we are measuring we are having the faradic component but we have negated the charging component so this way we can have information about the faradic component only and that is what is called dpv and uh, we can show the dpv response so we have that dpv response curve also so here we can show one of the curve where the dpv responses are given yeah this is the dpv response so after we apply this kind of pulses then we get this kind of dpv response so this dpv response signifies a particular faradic component of the current so wherever you have a faradic reaction we get a peak like this so this is more useful so if you have two faradic reactions in your system you may be getting two such peaks so we'll be continuing this particular topic in the upcoming videos i hope this series will be helpful for you uh, and thank you very much